All right, hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U for another Legacy stream. Today we're playing with Fine and Andy's Aggro Nickfit deck. Now, Nickfit is, is a deck with one name, but a deck with many flavors. The Nickfit deck is built around Veteran Explorer, ramping you out additional lands so that you can cast big dumb things that are normally just too expensive for Legacy standards. And you can be in all sorts of colors and use all sorts of different planeswalkers or enchantments or creatures as your payoff. Well, this build essentially finishes the game with green creatures that you turn sideways for huge value. And that's mostly this like big old pile of stuff over here. Although since we are a green sun deck, we have a number of other really cool things along the way. And I want to highlight a couple of these creatures mostly for the same reason. So in my Sins of Legacy video from, I think, a couple days ago, by the time you all see this on YouTube, I talked about how when you're thinking about the format, think about the removal that's going to be played in the format and how you dodge it. And I think this deck does a really good job of dodging removal. I played a league against Hexdrinker the other day, and I realized I had zero outs to it once it had leveled up. Similarly, like, a Carnage Tyrant is hexproof. An Elder Gargaroth is not going to die to a lightning bolt or an abrupt decay. It's more or less only going to be taken out by a source of plowshares. And if something like a plague engineer hops in the way, like you still have probably made another creature to replace it, or at least gotten a card out of that card worth of value out of it, as well as some trample damage. Hey, Nathan, welcome. So generally speaking, I, I like what's going on here. Sometimes you get a Nick Fit donation, and it's it, it's real clunky and questionable, and you're playing a lot of cards that don't you don't feel like you're regularly going to be able to cast. But this is a two color Nick Fit deck. I think we're going to be very consistent in terms of like being able to cast our spells. And honestly, since not that many of our cards are really that expensive, it's going to be. <laughs> Well, look, I didn't call out Catfit directly. <laughs> hey, Dukes, welcome. Uh, but but yeah, there have been a couple of uh, more questionable Nick Fit donations in the past. And if you look at the sideboard, the sideboard just feels tight. Like, we have Ley Lines and Surgicals for Graveyard Decks. We have, like, some Thought Seizes for Combo... Uh, we have Veil of Summer to protect our stuff. And then just a couple of good cards, like Collector Oof, Rex Sage, Delusion, Engineer. This just feels... Yeah, Nathan, that's a great way to put it. This deck list just feels clean. And that's not something I often say about Nick Fit decks, because it's like, haha, overwhelming splendor goes 10 mana. Ah, there's There's a lot of that sort of stuff going on. All right, um, I'm really excited to to go and give this a, a spin. Uh, folks who are watching on YouTube, you know, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. That sort of stuff really helps me get my, my videos out there and get more eyes on them. It means more than you think, which is why I ask at the beginning of every video. Good luck, have fun. You too. Um, my opening hand only has one mana source. I don't think that flies for a Nick Fit deck. Um, okay. So, this second hand is awkward. Since this is a multi six, I can put the Dryad Arbor back, and then Green Sun can be a ramp spell. But then I'm stuck on double Veteran Explorer and two black uncastable cards. A five card hand might be better than that. I think I'm gonna keep this one. Because a black land is very good. And any playable two mana card is pretty good. Oh, I was on a play here. Hmm. All right. Hey, Morak, welcome. Yeah, this 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 list feels really cool. Yeah, fine, Andy. I am keep. Oh no. 
We're not good against Lotus Petal in game one, I don't think. <laughs> What's up, Phil? Um, well, we're losing game one, but um, other than that, life's good. <laughs> We have Plague Engineer game one. We beat Goblins game one. We do have Plague Engineer. Oh, we have Plague Engineer and Deed. We can beat Goblins game one. But the thing is, even if I had the black mana, I still probably would have played the Veteran Explorer on one. Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely loving Legacy. All of my leagues have been really fun. That I've played since the band started up. So we could just see Infernal Tutor for Infernal Tutor for Goblins. Um, I haven't done the Past in Flames math yet. I'm not sure if it works out with two Dark Rituals. Opponent says it does. So this is three. And then it's up to six, which is Infernal Tutor for Tendrils for Xaxes. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. GG. We'll try again. All right. Uh... I'm going to start with what do I want to bring in. I want Thoughtseize, I want Veil. Ooh, I liked your Mono White Vintage video the other day. That was a blast. I'm really enjoying the Vintage Aspirant decks. I want Collector Roof. I want Plague Engineer. Leyline is questionable. Uh, that was game one. We are about to move to game two. I might have enough discard that surgical is actually good. So some number of, like, this stuff is going out. I don't know if it'll be all of it, but some number of that is going out. X-Drinker is not what I want to be using a green sun on. Ramming up Excavator is not what I want to be using a green sun on. And I can probably just board out one top-end card, like the Carnage Tyrant or something like that. So now the real question is, do I want Surgical Extraction because it's better when paired with Thoughtseize and Cabal Therapy, or do I want Leyline of the Void as turn zero interaction? How am I doing? A minute left. All right, I wish I could read. And Magic Mani Maniacs, thank you very much for following. Uh, Morak, everyone who quits Magic, like, still keeps this, like, tiniest finger to, to Magic. It's just like... Well, maybe I'll watch a video here. I think... I think I'm going to call this good for when I'm on the play, and I might adjust when I'm on the draw. <clears throat> um, I will keep this. <laughs> My opponent says, keeping the griffin, uh, referring to the Archon in Vintage, out of bolt range is very rude. I agree. How do you make your Veteran Explorer die? Usually with Cabal Therapy. But you can kill it any number of other ways. Um, such as with an Abrupt Decay, a Pernicious Deed. Ooh, buddy.
think I actually want to take the Thoughtseize here. Because I want my Green Sun to be able to convert. Um, and I want to keep my Veil. Sorry, to finish that thought, I want my Green Sun to be able to convert into Collector Oof. The Gitrog Monster. That's not a name I've heard in quite some time. <sighs> Why is Nick Fit called Nick Fit? Oh, Chubby Rain. Oh, Chubby Rain. You're asking the hard questions. So, Academy Rector is sometimes one of the enablers. Nickfit can be built a number of different ways, where you, you're always going to have the Veteran Explorer portion, but sometimes it has Academy Rector or Arena Rector or both, and other times it doesn't. Yeah, I, Titania is a lot of fun. Um, I don't know that it's always the best in Nick Fit. I, I feel like the, the card works slightly better in the Applejacks deck. Um, but it, it does work. Legacy names are indeed a hot mess. Uh, since my opponent doesn't really have anything they can do to interact with me, I'm just going to be lazy and just grab Collector Oof now. Why do we play two Oof? Card's good. Like, in the matchups where it's good, I don't mind naturally drawing one. But the second is definitely less necessary than the, than the first, basically, unquestionably. I don't know, like, I, I, I play a decent amount of things like Moon Prison that have artifacts with activated abilities. Whenever your opponent just, like, naturally has that sucker on turn two, it's, it, it's like you just got kicked in the junk. It's just like, oh no. Like, that shuts off some of my really cool things, like liquid Metal Coating, while also going and, like, shutting off an artifact land if you're playing those, or Moxin. Hello and welcome. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into it since, like, I don't want to spoil the YouTube video, but... Oh, no. You go off through Collector Oof while I, like, tapped out to play it? That's rough, if so. Um, but, like, the Giants are good against Plague Engineer, but, like, they cost four mana. And that is a very real cost. Oh, that's a sick line. So they get the Abrupt Decay there, which allows them to turn on their LEDs. So they can pat, fat, blah, blah, blah. flash back past in flames. Oh, that's a good line. I'm not 100% sure if I would have 
caught that one if I was the opponent. I might have. <laughs> My opponent says, I almost got a pedal, but then I was smart. Ooh. Oh, no, no. They, they still have Cabal Ritual. All right. So then it's Dark Petition that tendrils here. <laughs> uh I'm 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 letting my opponent do their victory lap here. They have uh they have earned that one. GG's. Well played, Sliphorn. Well played. <laughs> Why have two small oofs when you could have one big oof? Okay. Um I'm on the play for this round. My opening hand is medium. Assassin's Trophy is either great or terrible, depending on exactly what the matchup looks like. I think this hand is kind of too polarized and too close to the, like, does nothing a good portion of the time side that I should ship this one and look for something safer. Uh, uh, this is just like the last hand where I'm going to start with, like, Green Sun for Dryad Arbor, play double Veteran Explorer and hope it's good. It wasn't good last time. Uh, we'll see how it feels this time. I don't think our opening hands have been kind to us thus far. Yeah, Nathan, I saw your, uh, your Twitter post of, like, can TES kill me from here? And the answer was, yup. What do you think of the Rector versions? I think they're totally fine. I don't know that I necessarily think they're better or worse. They come with their own sets of advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> Decay? Decay it, get double land, play new veteran explorer. Hope opponent isn't on basics. Or play patiently and decay there end of turn. One, two, three, four, five. I can still Elder Gargoloth next turn. I think I'm going to play it patiently. Like, this second Veteran Explorer in play does very little, and the cost of me being wrong is so high. Oh, yes. I don't miss Astrolabe and Arcanist and Oko. Not at all. Yeah, um, Morak, if I were to try to put things into words, I would probably say that a lot of the Rector builds win more very often. Oh no, this feels like combo with Preordain. Like, this build is a little bit lower to the ground. And I feel like we're trying to play respectable magic a good portion of the time. And when we get to go big, great. <laughs> and some other builds of, of Nick Fit are just like, Ugin or fuck you. <clears throat> oh, nice. So opponent put two cards on top of library. So we can also shuffle one of those away that they might have hid from discard. I don't know that I'd go quite so far as to say weak. I think I'd say unfavored. Like, you, you still have discard and such. <clears throat> Do 
Darth Pando, thank you very much for following. Hope you're enjoying the content. So this turn is super spooky in that we gave our opponent two mana. I present a two-turn clock, but I don't know that that's fast enough when my opponent just has seven cards in hand. Yeah, um, Lynn Chalice. I respect the hustle. Um, this is probably to work towards getting Hellbent for an Infernal Tutor. Um, some of the bug versions play some, like, Hate Bear-style stuff in the main deck and try to be, like, that, like, I'm slightly bigger than you role consistently. So all the all the ant boys and girls came out of hiding after Oko was gone. No, no, we're not unbanning Arcanist. Chubby Rain, like we got Luris unbanned in vintage. Let's 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 stop there. Let's not unuse the unbanning power. Um The Joe Cheney. To answer your question indirectly, players have to pick colors that they want to play now. With Astrolabe gone, it, every deck doesn't just get to be four or five color mush anymore. You pick a real color combination. And since you have to do that, it's totally fine to be thinking about playing things like Shardless Bug that were just not quite competitive with other things in the format, like Oko and Arcanist. All right. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes is what I think I did before. So I think I did all of these out before. Plus the Carnage Tyrant out. Plus the Hex Drinker out. And the Ramunap out. Uh, why Plague Engineer against Storm? Goblins. Empty the Warrens is a very real card that you should respect. Plague Engineer, at the end of the day, is still a threat. It's a small one, it's a 2-2, but it's still a threat. So I don't know that I want to go Toxic Deluge deep, because, like, that doesn't actually help me win, it just helps me not lose. Whereas Plague Engineer does help me win. So, last time around, this is how I boarded. Abrupt Decay might be better than some of my 3-drop plus stuff, just because it can tag an LED that's played out. So Joe Cheney, thank you very much for following. So I think I'm going to board this way again when I'm on the play, and when I'm on the draw, I'll grab Ley Lines. <clears throat> yes. Yes, indeed. We're going to take Infernal Tutor. I can wait till draw step to do this without being punished.
You might ask, Phil, how did you get so sexy? The answer is, is easy. It's just by playing properly. That's all it takes. God, that feels good. <clears throat> I assume I lose the Sylvan Library here. Well, I don't know who Rod Stewart is, so we're going to go with no. I'd hit you with some Richard Astley instead. Got the words to that down. <laughs> so Veil of Summer is a nice safety net, but I don't really have anything to protect here. So I might just end up Veil of Summering once to filter. Didn't you see my Veil of Summers last turn? Like, that's rough. I guess, I guess they just want to, like, play through them. I do get hexproof too, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Like it does fuel them towards like um threshold and such, so like I think it's fine. Um there is a very real chance that it's correct to just surgical their ponders here and make it harder for them to actually set up a win. <clears throat> I think I like that. Um, fine and Andy, because I didn't pay life for the surgical. I used my one mana from this swamp instead. Alright, um, small misplay. On my previous turn, I think I should have played Verdant Catacombs instead of Prismatic Vista, so I could have fetched up Dryad Arbor. Nice. Nathan, I'll look forward to it. If only you could tutor Null Rod. Oh man, do I have news for you. Um, Nathan, I'll throw that one into the queue as a YouTube direct. Um, and I'll record it. Um, whatever day I have some time this week. Probably the weekend. Ok. 
Green Fun Zenith. I like it. All right, so my opponent has a fish. Oh, geez. Uh, X equals four. Questing Beast. Alternatively, X equals two. Second Collector Oof and Sylvan Library this turn. Yeah, I think I like that better. Do I have another hateful-ish card that could give me variety? No, I don't have a T. The issue is the Echoing Truth, because, like, Echoing Truth is an out to this. Uh, the Hex Drinker is currently in the sideboard, Saito. Otherwise, that would be totally fine. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the second Collector Oof under the logic that if I make it to the ne my next turn, Sylvan Library can find me something else to do. Um, I also don't think that just getting a Scavenging Ooze and holding up two mana is all that bad either. Uh, mm, so that's going back. I don't know that I want to Cabal Therapy and Thought Seize this turn. I think I want a Therapy next turn. Paying four... And then thought seizing afterwards, making that six total is a lot of life. I'm already at 14. Uh, white faces, we're playing against Ant. Although they currently don't have Infernal Tutors. So it's a slightly sadder version of Ant than normal. Yep. And that's another reason to not uh, just pay the full there. Uh, White Faces, congrats on your uh, tournament win, by the way. Your deck list looked sweet. I saw that and immediately sent it to Brian to make sure he had seen it. My day is going well. So, I more or less know that my opponent has a Dark Ritual. 
But do I name Cabal Ritual instead? This Cabal Ritual is much more threatening than Dark Ritual. I'm not gonna name LED with uh, Collector Oof in play. Let's start by naming Dark Ritual. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, baby. <laughs> so, what I was going to do next was Cabal Therapy them, and then I could take their Chain of Vapor, uh, sacrificing this Still of Lethal on board. Disgusting. <laughs> the laptop isn't working or the dragon deck isn't working because i could see that sentence going either way <laughs> um on the draw i think ley lines are reasonable no it, it, it was a cool idea i i sent a couple of I, ideas along about the dragon deck Stacular, I always enjoy playing Nick Fit. It's a good time. <clears throat> I'm going to trim a tracker. Honestly, maybe I should be trimming Veteran Explorer. <laughs> it hasn't been proven bad yet. I mean, that's what's important. I have a lot of, like, medium minus cards here. Like, Vet is eh. Pernicious Deed is eh. Decay is eh. Submit 64. Hold on, let's, let's not get carried away now. I could also, like, board out my Surgicals if I'm boarding in Ley Lines. But, like, the times where I don't have Ley Lines, Surgicals is still good. Uh, uh, Titania is excessive. All right, I'll buy that. Um, um, awkward. I think I shipped this one. <laughs> um, so this one has some problems, uh, but I'll be keeping it. <laughs> the prismatic vista, though. Just saying. Uh, it's awkward. This just this just smells like I have a veil. I'm not I'm not casting a discard spell into it. But my only other play is cast Veteran Explorer, and I totally would have to Yu-Gi-Oh! Heart of the Cards here. Alright, I lied. I am casting a Thought Seize into a uh, fail. White faces, I disagree, because if I get the green source... Oh, okay, I, I see what you're saying. 
you're saying for speed. Okay, I, I was thinking if I have the green source, I want to cast it, but if it's in the graveyard, it's already there. All right, yeah, I see, I see what you mean. <clears throat> I do have the line of surgical extraction to see what their hand is and hit with Cabal Therapy the first time. Yeah, Brecht, we'll, we'll see if we live long enough slash get some mana to actually uh, implement the plan. I do not know if I will be surgicaling Veil. I don't feel like I am as of right now. I feel like I want a Thoughtseize to resolve and then, like, strip them of Infernal Tutors again. Because I need time to get out of my current situation. <clears throat> or more. More mana is good, too. All right, they have a varied hand. I'm going to be taking Infernal Tutors and surgicaling them. And then taking their Ad Nauseam. That's their hand. This time I am just going to do this on my turn, though. Because of Veil of Summer. In the post-sideboard games, uh, getting punished by a Veil. Well, I, actually, Veil doesn't stop things in Graveyard. Never mind. I take that back. Yeah, okay, Fluster is another great example. Like, once my opponent has things that can interact with me, I don't necessarily want to risk that. All right, is Dryad Arbor a keep? I think Dryad Arbor is a keep. It lets me cast a bunch of other cards. And currently I know this Thoughtseize is safe. I'll take the Cabal Ritual. <clears throat> I can sacrifice the Arbor to take the Dark Ritual, but I think my Arbor is more valuable in letting me cast my green cards. Dryad Arbor Beats is also a win condition, yes. And playing um, Ant without Infernal Tutors is definitely hard mode, though. My opponent is also drawing a lot of land. If I draw one more land, I might consider sacrificing the Dryad Arbor and trading for Dark Ritual. Is it worth holding the land for Tracker? Do I have one Tracker left in the deck? I think I sideboarded one out. <clears throat> yeah, I suppose it's possible that I want to hold that land.
Oof. <clears throat> I think I just oof. There's a world where I just get, like, a questing beast and crash in for four and put more pressure on, but I like shutting off LED, even though my opponent has a bunch of mana. Ooze should be good game. Ooh, I don't mind ooze, actually. Yeah, actually, I think I like that better. So this ooze can eat the ad nauseum, meaning that's not a reasonable thing that they can do. Uh, which should put them on very close to no outs. I can also eat my veteran explorer at some point to pump this. Ooh. Ooh. That's a punish for not getting Collector Oof. Wasn't expecting that. More of a TES card. Play Ley Line Eat Ad Nauseum, I believe is my line. But I don't need to eat ad nauseum yet. That can that can wait. I can't really see them doing anything other than just goblins here. And... Well, maybe they can Infernal Tutor... No, they can't Infernal Tutor Chain. Those are extracted. <clears throat> like, they can just get a cantrip and try to build a lethal storm that way? All right, so you cast past in flames, so I'll eat. I'll eat the adnaws here, I suppose. <clears throat> adnaws from nine is probably better than under slash preordain.
Uh, the storm count is not showing up on screen for some reason, so I don't know. I think it's just three. The storm, no, five now. So they've messed up. They had they didn't cast their Cabal Ritual while they still had enough cards in Graveyard. That's a big deal. Um, notably, I am just going to be dead to Tendrils if they find it here. All right. Rough. I should have gotten the oof. Thought I had things locked up enough, but I didn't realize that my opponent had a Wishclaw Talisman. That meant that they had one artifact-based tutor. That's on me. Uh, okay, this opening hand is uh, pretty awkward. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan it and try to find something a little bit more consistent. Yikes. Um, what are the chances that I draw a turn one or turn two play? Very high. 25 hits. I'll keep this. Playing a ley line is what didn't work. You could have skused more. Yeah, that's reasonable as well. All right, I have at least two basics now. And that gets me to Ramunap, which will be out of Punishing Fire range. Uh, this is probably going to be a long one. Yeah, fine, and Andy, I, I do agree. Our opening hands have almost always been bad. And I don't think that's the deck's fault. Because, like, we have 15 one-drops, 10 two-drops, plus Green Sun. That can ramp towards the later drops. Control for days. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, like, Nick Fit is one of the better things to be doing in the format or anything. But I think that I would expect... Yikes. I would expect the deck's performance to, like be better than this. Like, we're, we're just not casting very many spells. Yikes. This isn't the end of the world because, like, I can play Ramunap and then like, I can at least be at three mana every turn and, like, build towards more basics. All right, my opponent found Tranquil Thicket. Oh, I'm going to get buried. See, the cool thing as, as someone who does donation deck lists is I never choose anything. I, I, I can play the deck list card whenever I need to play the deck list card. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so opponent's doing stuff.
Uh, there's never a Shadenport yet. Do I want to fetch to Thin? I know I want one Swamp and one Forest. Oh yeah, rip rip users who are watching on a phone for sure. This is this is turn three. I I, I can't count. Opponent has like seventeen lands in play. Ooze? Man, why is opponent so good? Tranquil Thicket is in hand, so I can't eat the life from the loam currently. Opponent's too too powerful of a wizard. All right, they haven't found the Dark Depths yet. That's the good news. Okay, I have bad news. They have found the Dark Depths. <laughs> I repeat, they have found the Dark Depths. Which I do not have outs to. I do not have outs to. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, I think... I think we can just like bring in some ley lines now. <laughs> Look, I I know there are things that can theoretically buy us a turn, but we can't beat it. That's that's the issue, right? There there's there's no Caracas here. There's no engine that can repeatedly create a blocker for Merit Lodge every turn. We're getting we're getting bullied. All right, uh, so I want Leyline, I want Rex Sage, I want Surgicals. Uh, Dugs, I'll loop back to your question in a minute. I don't think I want Thought Seizes. I th Do I even play Cabal Therapy? Like, Cabal Therapy, sacrificing the Veteran Explorer is cool. Plague Engineer is not good unless we get two of them, and that happening versus Field of the Dead is very unlikely. I mean, I think I'm just playing a bunch of cards that have text that, like, can attack and block, and, like, that's where I'm going to be. <clears throat> Alright, so what are your thoughts on oof against Mox Diamond decks like Lands and Loam? Yeah, uh, that, that is my opinion. Like, if you shut off the Mox Diamond in Lands... Very early, you can often cut them off their red and green mana because there's so many colorless lands in the deck. But it's really not a reasonable late game draw, and it's often not going to do anything. I I think I want a better hand than that. Like <laughs> deck. <laughs> Yeah, but if I play Titania and immediately fetch it, and I repeat that pattern once every couple of turns, that's not crazy. But it sure feels like I'm on my way to 05 City.
I'm going to grab a bayou. Because I'm already exposed to wasteland. And we at least theoretically can answer life from the limb with surgical extraction. Um, don't think I'm gonna fire off an assassin's trophy on a land here. slow my roll. I'm not in any hurry. My opponent's not doing anything threatening yet. <clears throat> That's gotta go. I might even consider surgicaling that. Ooh, okay, my opponent has one forest. I'm gonna I want to surgical this to see what my opponent's hand looks like here. Drop of honey. All right, um notable things. <coughs> Two Punishing Fire, one Clothis, most of the rest of the stuff looks pretty stock. I'm going to get Scavenging Ooze. I'm going to get Scavenging Ooze because I think Scavenging Ooze is threatening enough to make my opponent play their Drop of Honey. And I want the Drop of Honey gone because I have way better threats later on. Fuck. Did we, uh, did we bring in any outs to a Merit Lodge? Hold up. Hold up. Quick check. Nope. Nope, we don't, we don't beat that here. We don't, we don't beat that here. And the drop of honey for insult to inst injury. Yep, alright, uh, not enough creatures in the graveyard to eat to go above 21. And, uh, we can pack in the towel here. Throw in the towel. Okay, like, can I catch a break on a keepable 7-card hand at some point in this league? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, this hand is reasonable. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw back the Pernicious Deed here. 
I have a one, two, three curve. This is this is great. All right, I threw back the pernicious deed against what is very likely death and taxes. That's my planes of choice for death and taxes. I think I still take the call of the Stoneforge Mystic because if they get Batter Skull, that's kind of bad for me. I mean, obviously, control for days. I I agree with you. Real decks have curves. Agreed. Hello! You're, you're just going to give me all this mana? Really? I mean, I'm going to take it. Didn't get Aven Mind Censored or anything. Um, so we just, uh, we just getting in there? Um, I can give it haste, but not also trample this turn. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just extract maximum tireless tracker value. I've realized a problem with my current plan. So we're going to let Collector Oof die in combat, probably. Oh, thank God they attacked. <laughs> this would be a savage source of plowshares on Tireless Tracker, by the way.
I know they have a flicker wisp. <clears throat> I guess how many basics do I have? Oh, I have a billion basics. Never mind. That's all fine. Probably want to Cabal Therapy that Flicker Wisp, and then I can just play Shifting Ceratops. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, I probably messed up this turn. Fetch the Forest instead of a Swamp. Now I can't necessarily double spell. The Flicker is going to do just Reset Tireless Tracker. All right, I didn't play this game optimally. <clears throat> That's probably okay. My opponent didn't either. Opponent needs like a recruiter or a palace jailer. Stoneforge is okay. Batter Skull is getting assassins trophied. One for trample, if opponent... Well, all right, um, go ahead and take my attack here. My opponent should just block Tireless Tracker. All right, they did just block Tireless Tracker. That's fine. We'll go two mana, target my opponent, play Cabal Therapy, name Flicker Wisp. Their last card is a redundant Thalia. That's no bueno. I played things in this order, which is slightly less than optimal for tireless tracker reasons, but it lets me pivot and draw a card if I find that I need to work towards something else. Lol. He 
you feel like we're ahead. Fair. <clears throat> I guess I probably could have just Assassin's Trophied like the Mother of Ruins pre-combat and then actually killed this turn. But, um... I wasn't really thinking about my lines, if we're being honest, because um, I have a lot of power in play. <laughs> my opponent technically should have bounced their Thalia there. It leaves them with one card in hand instead of zero cards in hand. All right. So Oof's going to come in. Rex Sage is going to come in. Plague Engineer and Toxic Deluge are going to come in. The discard is eh. All right, Morak, thanks for joining for a while. Thanks, I'll see you around. I don't really know what to board out. There are some cards that are awkward because there's le they're legendary creatures. Questing Beast is a great example of that, but like it is a 4-4 with very relevant stats. Otherwise, the discard is okay, but just okay. It's a little bit worse on the draw. I probably want to keep the therapies mostly for the veteran explorer based reasons. Board out that clearly legendary creature. I could trim one ceratops just because it's something kind of eh. In the face of Swords the Plowshares and Path to Exile. Maybe I can trim another therapy and like chump block the Veteran Explorer. My opponent wasn't playing around me chump blocking and killing my own creatures that game. Oh, baby. I'll be keeping this. Like, there's some awkward things about it, but <clears throat> I get to go like. Oh no, I don't have green mana. If Dryad Arbor gets removed. I totally thought this was a forest. Oops. Um. Well, that's okay. We'll try to go nuts on turn two. Oh, the blanket's still here. Don't you worry. Bullwrath's Stronghold, huh? Okay. I'm going to play Veteran Explorer. Then I'm going to play Phyrexian Tower. Then I'm going to sacrifice Veteran Explorer. Get Black Black. Will I use this ability? Yes, I will. I have a Swamp in hand. I think I'm just going to go Forest Forest. All right, now I can green sun for up to x equals three.
Alternatively, I can do what I'm about to do. So if they had sourced the plowshares, unquestionably, they would have sourced the plowshared my Dryad Arbor. So they don't have sourced the plowshares. And if I make it back to my turn and actually level up Hex Drinker all the way, that's pretty disgusting. Skyclave does mean my opponent has some outs to it. But this is pretty strong. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't get to eight this turn. That's okay. Why would I want to sack it in response to Skyclave? I don't think that gets me anywhere. I think I'd rather take four damage this turn. Oh, bring it back with Stronghold. That's interesting. Is that good, though? Maybe that is good. I I technically should have leveled it up here. I was thinking about the uh, Volrath Stronghold lines. This turn is going to go way better than expected for me. My quote unquote misplay works out really well. Because now I can answer this sword. I won't trade with the Recruiter, but I would have traded with Spirit of the Labyrinth. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm just allowed to play this. This is just a thing that is happening right now. <laughs> okay, um, sure. Hello and good luck. <laughs> I do love me some humble pie. Would go well with my orange spice tea. Um, they can have Council's Judgment in the sideboard.
What are you doing? That line is so bad. <laughs> that line is so bad compared to what you could have done. Oh no, friend. Like, you could have main phase, flicker wisp the recruiter of the guard, get a new flicker wisp, and done the same thing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, you didn't block with enough creatures either. Now I trample over for six. <laughs> Oh. Oh, Adam. I also get to put uh, the Hex Drinker on top of the library, too. Like, Marin Crusader doesn't even line up super well versus Carnage Tyrant. <clears throat> that... The Trample, though! <laughs> God, this Trample is just so savage. I hope the YouTube folks make it this far to actually watch me bully someone. <clears throat> so, like, I just sacrifice it again? I guess I don't want to put it on top of my library yet, because I like Path to Exile, right? Yeah, you know what? If they Path to Exile me, they can Path to Exile me. I'll, I'll, I'll let them have the Hex Drinker if they have Path to Exile. Then I can hit the F6 button. And that's a, that's a lot of value. <laughs>
Trample. Trample still OP. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know that my opponent is playing towards their outs. Like, they need either a whole bunch of stuff at once to block and kill this by time and then, like, eventually Council's Judgment away, or they need to just build up something better, like a Batter Skull or something. Hey, Goblin, welcome. <clears throat> GG's. Bod will be up Tuesday. All right, uh, round five opening hand is a touch mana light, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it. We have both of our colors and a good turn one play. Uh, o O5 speed run is dead. But if I would have realized it was round five, I would have like taken a bathroom break. But here we are. Doomsday. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the doomsday here. Uh I don't think you need me to actually say these words, but um they're probably not good against doomsday. I don't want bottom bottom. <clears throat> uh, all right. Basic Swamps, I think that is what I'm doing. I think this first one just converts into a land. I don't know how many Basics are going to play. I'm guessing it's at least two. Please draw a land so I don't have to do that again. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> that, that's true. I did get the value play of making their, uh, their next draw step ever so slightly worse. Sorry, what? Um, I yeah, based based on empirical evidence, it appears that assassins trophying the land was the correct line. Uh, I think our opponent was on the like. Turbo, like, I want to play this league quickly line, and that's why they did what they did. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, these. <clears throat> uh, Rupt Decay is not usually going to be great. Collector Oof has very marginal value. It's probably going to get sideboarded out. I might keep it. Uh... I probably don't need Carnage Tyrant. 
yeah, let's let's board this out. Oh yeah, the plague engineers are very bad too. Something's got to be worse than Collector Oof, right? Like, one of these four or five drops is probably worth less. Oh, yeah, Deed's pretty bad. <clears throat> Let's try this. Opponent has kept seven. This hand goes turn one Cabal Therapy Doomsday, turn two Sylvan Library, turn three Hope to be Alive. I would much rather have a Thoughtseize based hand than this hand. Uh, Moist Junk, we're playing against Doomsday, not Storm. I think since I have two Assassin's Trophy, which are close ish to dead, I just mulligan this one. Yeah, this hand is way better. Uh, I'm throwing back one of the two three drops. I think Tireless Tracker's power being higher means that I value it more highly. We can get flustered, we can get dazed, we can get veiled here if my opponent has uh, a grain splash. Uh, right. Dark Ritual isn't exactly insane here. My opponent can still resolve a Doomsday next turn. I think I'm just going to take the un the ideas unbound. That makes some of the piles a little bit harder. Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't, because I can just, like, get it back. I guess if I don't take the Dark Ritual, though, there's some Isles that just kill me this turn because I left them with Blue Blue. Yeah, I guess I should have taken... Yeah, okay, yeah, they're getting the ideas on to bound back. All right, yeah. Figured that out just a touch too late. All right, YouTube folks, I'm back. Pause the video for a minute while my opponent was figuring out their life. No, the remaining cards in hand are Force of Wills. So, um, I'm going to Cabal Therapy them and name Force of Will. What do you think of that line? I like it. And next turn, I want a green sun for oof. But I think I am dead. Confirmed dead.
We got one more game. <clears throat> Do I just, like, play another anemic collector oof? Because, like, it's so hard to make it to this late game stuff. Maybe I do that. Um. Our options don't feel great here. Um, this hand doesn't do anything. Like, surgical's cool, it shuffles piles, but I need, I need, like, some interaction. Yeah, this is fine. Gonna confirm this is yeah, it is a May. Alright. I'll keep this, I'll toss back the Assassin's Trophy. Trophying the duel did work in game one. Um, so their hand's not really impressive. Or take the ponder since it digs the deepest. Yeah, see, if they go pedal into preordain, that gives me a two for one. I'm taking that. And there's a good chance they miss on a land with a preordain. Oh. <laughs> oh, they have they can hard cast days. Um, that's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It walks into the daze, but it still gets rid of the lotus petal. And I don't remember who it was who was ripping on the second oof earlier, but we have green sun for a second oof to shut off future artifact mana as well. Oh, they're gonna decay it rather than daze. Yeah, I guess that's fine. That that accomplishes the same goal. Right, they found a land. Um. Yeah, no, I, I guess I'm fine getting the days out of their hand, right? The one isn't particularly great here. Oh no, Moto needs a reset for sure. It is a quality program that can't stay up for two hours without needing a reset. I think Dryad Arbor is one of the literal worst draws on my deck that turn.
Yeah, I mean, my opponent has to win in the same turn that they cast a Doomsday. Because I just have lethal otherwise. All right, we we pulled out of the tailspin and ended up two three in the league, uh, which I feel is lucky. Um, honestly, I think we saw an underperformance of this deck tonight. I I had so many mulligans. We got paired against combo in four of the five rounds. Uh, a lot of our hands were clunky. Not even once did we get to do, like, the Veteran Explorer Cabal Therapy plan on turn two. Like, we didn't get the best showing from this deck, and and that's okay. No, we, we got a 2-3 out of it. We also beat Death and Taxes. Um, I still more or less feel the same way I felt about this deck at the beginning of the league. And that's that for a Nick fit deck, this list looks really smooth. Uh, we had, I, I think, poor draws and poor pairings tonight. And I, I think if we played against more control and more Delver, the, the games would have been more interesting and varied. Um, but I think that's okay. I had okay tools for most of my matches, although Doomsday is a deck that's a little bit difficult to hate on. Um, like, there aren't that many cards that are just, like, very good against Doomsday specifically, and a lot of the, the hate bears don't really matter versus Doomsday. Um, if I were going to play Nick Fit again, I would run this same 75 again and just tr see how it feels playing against other things. Oh no, I absolutely want that main deck collector oof, unquestionably. That that will steal games versus decks all all the time. I'm taking that all day. All right, YouTube folks, if you made it this far, you know, throw me a comment with your thoughts about if there's anything you would want to throw into the the deck list. Nick Fit is often, you know, joked that like anything you have in your trade binder is playable in in Nick Fit. Um so if you have ideas for things that should have been in this deck list, uh let me know. And if you're really enjoying the video, please consider, you know, hitting that subscribe button and the little bell that turns on notifications for my content. Help people find my content by getting me injected into that YouTube algorithm. Goodbye, YouTube me. Yeah, goodbye everyone listening to YouTube Phil. Brainstorm fixes this deck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Brainstorm fixes a lot of legacy decks.